Awesome. All right. Well, good uh, good day, friends of Gaming Concepts Podcast. Welcome to episode three. So good to be with some of my good friends here. My name is Trevor Gertson, and I am joined by two doctors. I am not a doctor, but they are. Dr. Michael Russell. How are we doing today, Dr. Russell? I am doing fantastic. Kraft. Dr. Kraft, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Trevor. How are you today? I, I'm well. I'm well. I'm uh, just sipping my sipping my black coffee and, and enjoying another beautiful sunny day in Kansas. So Yeah. Well, it's overcast here. Morning. Is it so. really? Uh-huh. Is it really? No, we got we got some sun. We got some sun. So getting ready for the weekend and uh getting ready to spend some time with the family. Uh, hopefully race some BMX tonight and just uh, living, living life, living life. So awesome. Well, uh, we are week three, episode three. Pretty excited. I, I do want to know, um, last week we had a special guest with us, Mr. Bubba Gettertz. And uh, Bubba is able to share a lot about the work he's done with the Varsity Esports Foundation. And so want to know kind of any, any final thoughts on that. And also Kristen, how did your roller skating go last week? Of course. I told you last week, I just put it on my calendar. (laughs) Oh, well, I kept thinking this was the week though. Kristen. No, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And and I felt so uh, weird about it, knowing that people were seeing it now that I actually (laughs) removed it from my calendar. Oh man. So when I actually go, so be prepared when you do yeah. see it. That means I am absolutely a hundred percent in. Do you, do you need me to go with you, Kristen? I would be happy. I could be like a blocker or something. I think I can do it. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I, I would be I would be happy for anybody yeah. to go. I mean, I, I am not afraid. I think we should all go, Trevor. You I will I will drive. No, I will we'll make the drive yeah, we'll to be a part it. of that. You know, <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, uh gaming concepts this week has been blowing up. I know uh Kristen, both you and I, we get to speak with educators each and every day about what gaming concepts is doing for kids. And and as the school year is uh is off and running now, we're we're starting to hear those stories about uh, schools using it. And if I remember correctly, I hope I can talk about this. Both Mike, you and Kristen were able to go back to uh, May's Complete High School this week and show off and see the the work that has been going on there and how gaming concepts and gaming is still thriving at May's Complete High School. I don't know if you can talk about that piece at all, Mike and Kristen. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is the birthplace of gaming birthplace. concepts. True. I mean, it was it was like a history tour. And so this is where Gaming Concepts was born, children. Yes. And it really was, Mike. So what was it yeah, like yep. going back? And you get to a lot, but it's just so nice to see stuff. So, yeah, I, I'm so excited for the school year to have got started. Like, I, I love going to the classrooms and, and not just I was actually able to go to another school last week, which I shared. And then I was at complete twice this week because I was a, like a guest speaker for a career speaker on Monday. Um, so I got to go into the lab and and talk to the kids and. Um, it's always fun to go back and see and enjoy and see what the kids are doing. And uh, it's kind of surreal still. Like when I go back, I'm just like, this is like, we did this, we built this place right here. And um, you know, I hope someday that that'll be like the esports hall of fame or something. I guess we'll find out. Maybe we'll, we'll buy the building or something when they want to get rid of the school and we'll just turn that into that. But Wichita, but, Kansas, the home of uh home of gaming concepts. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's I, super cool. Yeah. Kristen. And then we went with Kristen again yesterday to yeah. show it off to some, some, some folks who are thinking about getting into esports and, and gaming concepts. And that was great to, to show off. And Kristen can talk a little bit about that too. So. Yeah, they really just wanted to see, you know, what it looks like just for a layout, how the lab looks. Uh, And you did a great job with the decorating and the lighting and just making it really feel like an esports, you know, room, home. And I think what what I really got that I, you know, as an educator, I I didn't know much about esports. And it's been very rare that I've actually gotten to go and see kids in an esports classroom and actually doing this class. And I loved it because the teacher was always saying, make sure you're talking, make sure you're talking. There was not a single cell phone in sight. The students were actively engaged. So when when I think somebody goes into that classroom and uh, initially it just looks like you got kids kind of wasting time and playing games, they were so in the moment and really talking in an effective, controlled, 
communicative. You didn't hear kids cussing. You know, I've heard my son cuss in the basement. Let's be honest. You know, he's not always real PC uh, when he's gaming, but something about putting it in that classroom and that controlled environment and seeing the kids really come together with that teamwork and that effective communication was just awesome to see. Just, they were so in it. And they were, you know, getting, they were meeting that final goal. So I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, there's really no better way to teach somebody something than when it's actually happening. Right. I mean, right. Like, uh, it, you can go and tell me all about digital citizenship and how I need to be a good person, but right. I don't, I don't recognize what that is as a student, unless you know, nope. somebody's there to tell me what that is. I don't know what that looks like. And Correct. We, we don't have a lot of good examples online to, to show that any, you, you know, right now. And, I think that's part of our mission, uh, and Christy and I's mission, and all of us at Jenny and, and Gaming Concepts is, you know, we have to grow our own good di digital citizens, and, yeah. right, and that's how we're going to do it is through this by the real world, by the by the real world moments, and when those things happen, so they know how to react and how to adapt to those situations. And mm -hmm. I mean, and you're right. I mean, they're the the kids in that class. A lot of them weren't leaders, and they weren't in control of themselves, and they were. I could pick the out the leaders for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's one kid in there who basically runs that thing, the yeah. whole program, the competitive scene, everything. And yeah, uh, that kid, I, I remember when he came to school because he was still there when I was there and you would have never in a hundred years picked that kid out to be the person that was going to lead that team. Yes. But it happens over and over and over again. I see it all the time. It's the yeah. kid. They just step right into that role because that's their comfort zone. It's amazing. So Yeah. The kid that never talks in class is suddenly leading an entire room to make it happen. And mm -hmm. that was so apparent yesterday. And all we talk about is wanting to get kids to communicate more because they're on their phones or social media. And here it is on a platter. I think there's the exact opposite of thought about, you know, games and things like that is actually doing some really good things for kids, mm -hmm. their communication, their collaboration, their teamwork. Yeah. It's phenomenal. I, I think it's important for educators and administrators to see that in action and also see like a lab designed out and see what that looks like. Cause even Christy will say this, um, you know, she didn't really get it. I mean, she was very supportive of me like we've talked about before, but she didn't understand it until we went to a gaming convention mm. and she saw, then she was like, I totally get it now. I understand why this is important and what happens here because it's not just kids playing video games. It's, it's all the other things, right? All the other jobs, every career that you need to run a business, you also need to run esports companies and gaming companies. And I so agree. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Mike, but she also said, and I thought this was really fantastic, when she said, I would come in as the principal and I would pull kids out in the middle of their game. And she said, it, it took me a while to realize that I would never walk into a basketball practice and pull kids out of their game. Ooh. And I thought, that is genius. Yeah. She's right. But that's the validity that it that it that you don't get until you actually see it. I mean, it, it's the same thing that as as a dad, how you you look at your kids playing games or as a principal who didn't get it and was like, we're not playing video games because you don't see you don't see it until you do. But what what you guys have been able to do with actually taking schools on tours to see it. Mm -hmm. and getting to watch it in person and, and to hear the stories. And that's what we're trying to do on this podcast. Tell the stories of gaming concepts um, because it's great to see a curriculum. It's great to, to see a promotional video, but to actually hear the stories of kids who are impacted every single day. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, it's the good stuff. Yeah. Well, I think Kristen has a surprise guest for us. Uh, no, I don't know. Do you want to maybe a, do you want us to might. take a few guesses at who this might be? We've already had it. Well, I'm guessing because I forgot. I forgot oh. to no, I'm kidding. I, oh, yeah. I really do I hope have the guest isn't listening right now. That would be sad. <laughs> no, I'm super excited about our guest. Are you guys into the clues? Should we do the clues again? Oh, I love the clues. Give, give it a shot. To... All righty. So I have I have some clues for you, and I'm gonna start with are we good? Are you guys ready to go? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, just all right. Wait on you. Just wait this on is you, a man. pretty good guess. I'm gonna Google so, some, I'm gonna Google everything you tell me. Are you gonna Google everything? Figure it out. All right. I, I am the Google. <laughs> okay, so here we go. The first clue is that this person played basketball and softball in college. Right? I'm gonna say are we gonna, do you really want us to guess or should you we can try? Guess? I'm gonna say Danielle from Texas. Nope. No. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> This person is a hardcore 
70s, 80s music fan, Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin. So I immediately like her. Hmm. Was she at the Motley Crue concert you were at a few weeks ago? Well, I can't say that. That might give it away. Well, that's what I needed to know. That helps me narrow it down. It also (laughs) helps everybody know that you were at a Motley Crue concert a few weeks ago. True. Yes. Okay. All right. Mm, I got nothing. This person loves to travel and have been to places like Greece and Egypt and Germany and France and Luxembourg and Belgium and Mexico. I got nothing. I'm going to say Karen Dooling. Ooh, that's a good guess. Nope. Oh. Oh, All right. Who is it? Drum roll, please. (laughs) The sneaker fanatic owning over 50 pairs of Vans, Allbirds, Karumia, Chuck Taylors, all kinds of things. It is the one, the only. Julie is coming. Julie, yeah. George. Julie, what's going on? (laughs) The world traveler. How are you guys? Good. How are you? (laughs) Wonderful. So we surprised him, Julie. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about who Julie is? Who I am. Yeah. What are you up to these days? And why would we have you on our show? So So you actually started a new job. What today? Yesterday. Yesterday. And so what is, is that the title, the K-12 Esports Pathway? And what's the actual title? Honestly, they haven't decided yet. So that's just what I'm calling it for now because essentially what it, what it will be. Um, You know, we've already adopted uh, gaming concepts in our high school. Um, So that uh, that's getting ready to roll out. And then uh, middle school, the middle school curriculum will be coming on deck for next year. So it'll be all just putting all that together and then on top of that writing some of the writing the elementary curriculum to get that pathway you know so we have a seamless just college and career ready you know just path for all of our kids no matter whether they're gaming or Mm -hmm. any of the parts that go around with even we discussed yesterday finance and insurance and yes all Mm -hmm. of the regular kind of positions that exist in every other you know uh job or career field so how, how many, I'm just curious in Fresno, how many high schools do you have gaming concepts in then? Uh, so we purchased them for all of our high schools and middle schools. So they oh, okay. enough um, uh, of the yeah, gaming concepts for high school for even our middle schools. Mm-hmm. So this year they'll be using our coaches for our middle school uh, esports league, league, which we call Fuel. Fresno oh, cool. Esports League. Um, our coaches will be using uh, the the curriculum and game plan um because we did we did purchase the lms uh for just helping our you know our young kids start to get acclimated to that Mm. as so they'll they won't they won't do the full curriculum as a course right definitely using portions like the you know the mindfulness the Mm -hmm. um and uh of course the exercises and uh and game plan is just i I just i'm thrilled with them to be able to pull out and talk to you know or listen to experts you know the pros uh and learn from them and how to improve in the games so absolutely (laughs) so can i can i ask you you are you're kind of more on the director level how do you stay engaged in knowing kind of what's going on and how this is being used for kids because You get it. You've seen it. You've applied it. But now part of your job is probably, I'm assuming, to get out and help others use it. Like, what does your day-to-day look like to help teachers, help schools implement the gaming concepts into their their daily routines? Oh, that's honestly my favorite part of what I get to do. And it's, I I always call it, it's kind of my side gig because it it doesn't, it benefits Fresno Unified in the sense that, you know, we're discussing what, what we're doing and, and uh, you know, our team wants other districts to be able to replicate what we're doing. But I, I honestly, I spend uh, a good amount of time on LinkedIn, just reaching out, posting things from just the esports sports world in general, but especially a lot of the generation esports and gaming concepts, um, posts that go out there. Sometimes I'll just throw out my own as well. And, um, and just reading and trying to follow a lot of people on LinkedIn. And then I, I, I probably get, I don't know, three to four, maybe more, uh, 
inbox messages a week where I reach out to those, uh, you know, individuals. Yesterday, uh, a gentleman just, at, he, he literally said, Purdue University is in my backyard and we're doing a horrible job here in our, in the high school level. And I was, I was honestly kind of shocked because Purdue just a couple months back had a huge esports conference that was mm -hmm. held there mm -hmm. and but it was geared towards college um, mm -hmm. and professionals. And, and that, and, and, and I mean, there was high, there was definitely high school there, but um, sometimes we, you know, we get focused on the bigger picture and not on our home, you know, where we are. And so, you know, I reached out to him. I said, all you need to do is connect me with someone in your district that can, you know, make decisions. And I'm happy to sit and, you know, just share our story. And that's, that's kind of what I do. I just share the story of what, what we've done. Um, but yeah, I, I get to spend a lot of time talking to different districts. You know, this, this, this week alone, it was, you know, got, uh, someone from Anaheim, uh, universe, I'm sorry, uh, unified school district reached out and, you know, it's just, I love to network and, and I want people to see the same success that I feel like, or maybe just the opportunity for success that I feel like our district has. Can I, can I ask, how do you get over because a lot of people, you, you, you're not afraid to get on social media, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and, and share videos and stuff. And that's how you're able to not only educate people, but promote it. How do you help other schools kind of get over that trepidation of, of sharing, of utilizing LinkedIn or utilizing these digital tools? Is, is there something that you just had to kind of come to realization with? Or how do you even help other school leaders get, get comfortable sharing what is going on in their schools? I think for LinkedIn, that's where I find a lot of the uh, superintendents or principals yeah. or uh, the decision makers in, dist yep. in school districts. Um, and so I think you have to be careful, right? Because every district's policies are a little bit different, right? You can, you can tag your school district without yeah. posting as your school. So they're, and not, not that that's doing anything wrong. It's you're bringing awareness that, yep. Hey, this is what our district is doing. It's not, you're not going to spam <laughs> your school district with inappropriate things by doing that. So, well, and it's allowing, it's allowing the message to get out. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's like oh, yeah. the, uh, the old school guy on the street corner shouting out. I mean, this is, this is your way of saying, Hey, this is yeah. good. And you don't promote things you don't love. Right. And for you to be able to put your name behind something, and put your reputation behind something means a lot. And so I, I just, I, I've been encouraged by the things I've seen you put out there because it helps me see too, here's some additional ways that this is being used for kids. Um, and those are things that you point people to. It's like, hey, check out what's going on in Fresno. Um, yeah. you, wanna, you wanna be like what's going on in Fresno. And you don't see that stuff if you don't have the courage like you have to, to put it out there. So I commend you for that. And I'm always encouraged by folks that are willing to put, put themselves out there because uh, it's not easy to do. Oh, thank you. Well, that for me, it is <laughs> just one of those <laughs> yeah. to share with people. And, you know, and, and I'll say speaking to, you know, putting yourself out there or being behind a product and it's not the product that yeah, no, nope. it's, it's you, uh -huh. yeah. it's, it's the, it's Gen E, it's the people who have created the product. Totally. Everybody's in it for the kids. And it, that's, that's something I'm honest with people when I meet, I say, look, yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you a product, just mm -hmm. meet these people and listen to what they, they have to share, uh, from their heart and, and their goals. Right. It's about the kids. Mm -hmm. um, yes. and, and that's, that's what I love about, I mean, literally everyone I've met at, at Ginny. So, well, you know, it's, it is because of Mike that I'm even here, right. I'm, I'm Mike and I met in March, uh, mm and just became very fast friends. When you meet a humble heart and mm -hmm. two humble hearts connect, it's just mm -hmm. it's really, a, you know, it's kind of seamless and mm -hmm. immediately, you know, it was like, okay, I, this is someone whom I think, you know, I can trust as an individual, but also somebody I would trust my kids with. Right. And, yeah. and, and that's, I don't know, that's kind of a measurement for me. Yeah. And, so a humble heart. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, it was like that's a seventies rock song. It's a good, <laughs> good, it's a good story. I mean, it's a another good story in the whole evolution. Well, tell of the story. Here. I mean, like, well, I mean, like Julie said, we met at a conference in March at NACAD, which she, you didn't mention this, but she's the NACAD Director of the Year, by the way. Um, 
just so you know. Um, Speaking of humble hearts. For Julie. So, um, yeah, she, um, we, she was, I think she kind of admired my Darth Vader bag because I have a Darth Vader bag that I roll around sometimes. And, um, and she was just sitting out in the lobby one day and then we were getting ready. To, I had driven up to Iowa and we were getting ready to head over to the conference. And I was like, Hey, you want to ride with us? I didn't, you know, we didn't, I didn't know her, you know, I knew she was going to the conference cause she had a badge, but, um, and she said she was speaking and I had no idea that, you know, she ran fuel and did all these awesome things. Wow. I didn't know who she was, you know, and, and, um, you know, I found all that as we found all that out as we were talking and over the weekend and, um, and then she was doing a presentation and she kind of figured out who I was and, and she mentioned some things and I said, oh, I think that might be some of our stuff, which is totally fine. You know, I don't care that you're talking about our stuff. It's great. And she went back and checked later and was like, that was your stuff I was talking about. And I was like, oh, <laughs> sweet. You know, that's good. I'm glad people are using it. So that's um, so cool. But then, yeah, we kept in touch and we've been to a couple more conferences together. And I think we're going to go out there in November and for another conference that, so they're having a NACAD conference out in Fresno. Um, um, they're going to start to branch out just from Iowa and she's got a real passion for esports. I don't know how she does her real job. I mean, to be honest, she's always emailing and calling and networking and everything. So she's a busy lady, but, um, you know, you can always see the passion in people and that definitely shines through with her. So yeah, she's great. I mean, she's a huge proponent for esports and, and everybody in it. So. Like, how would you address somebody that just puts their hand up immediately, says, no way, we don't, we, we can't teach the course. What are some things that you would help to alleviate that? It doesn't, you could start this in October. You can start it anytime you want. You could, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's it. it each chapter can stand alone by itself as, as something to be taught and inside of each chapter are it's broken down into you know uh, different com like here how to build a computer or you know here's the network system or you know more specific towards gaming and the way i kind of look at it is you know it, it can you don't have to our coaches are teaching it right there are yeah. users, right they're not using it in the classroom but right. you look through it and you don't have to it doesn't have to be done like page one to page a hundred. No, it, you could no. just flip through it and go, Hey, you know what? This section in chapter six and these three pages, this is going to work this week for, for what I want to teach my kids because it teaches them not just about gaming. It teaches them how to be humans, right? Like how to be really good humans, the, how to take care of yourself, how to recognize your place on a team and how to work together and things that maybe kids aren't being taught, you know, on a regular basis, whether it's at home or in school or they're unaware of, or, you know, they just kind of go with the flow of whatever groups they're a part of. And, but using just portions of the curriculum mm -hmm. can teach the kids how to just be really good humans. Um, and that was, that's, I think more than anything, what sold me was those 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 introspective pieces that are interwoven um throughout mm -hmm. the curriculum um yeah and that the mindfulness piece like that that's huge the you know just all that social emotional learning that's embedded without the thing i love and this is a pet peeve right but it's like okay we're gonna stop teaching for 20 minutes and do mm -hmm. SEL right now right um that that's not the point of sel sel should be so seamlessly integrated that the students don't even really know that that's what they're getting mm -hmm. that's what i think that gaming concepts provides and you know we all know that uh gaming and esports attract students that are neurodivergent and students the that population of students they struggle a little bit more with uh social awareness mm -hmm. and i by using those the the gaming concepts as part of what they're learning in their gaming, it's it is it's just that seamlessness that now all of a sudden what we're seeing is students that had that that social awkwardness or the extreme introvertedness or whatever it is they're now becoming leaders and they're realizing how wow. they interact affects their teammates and they want to win. They're really focused. Mm -hmm. They want to. They want to play well, and so they're learning these other pieces by pulling out just 
you know, even those sections within the curriculum to be able to help students grow in that way. And, and that is by far, I think, the best part. Of, I love that. Of gaming concepts. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned some of the sections in the book. One of one of the one of the things that Christy and I, when we initially wrote the book, we kind of went around on one particular lesson was router basics. <laughs> she was like, why do we need that in there? And I was like, I think they're going to want this. And you know what? We hear a lot of comments about router basics and that yep. being in the book. And people are so appreciative that it's in there. So that's right. my favorite one to talk about is router <laughs> basics. Because it makes people go, oh, oh, yeah, that's probably important to know. You're like, yeah, yep, it's, that's it's like a key piece you don't think about, but it's essential. It just doesn't well, come from the sky. You know, you really do have to do something <laughs> to make that stuff work. So. Well, and students, you know, even before I got into technology, right, like I didn't understand. I just I think most parents, most kids don't understand that. And there's a whole population of kids that are going to go into network, right? Like that's. Yes. That's the beauty of people looking at it from different angles. When you write those books, we have different, you know, we both come from different sides of, of how this should work. And so it, it makes a nice combination, a nice mesh when we get, when we get going on it. So, yeah. For this season, I'm excited to see the growth, not just in the students, but also mm -hmm. in the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my heart is I would like our coaches to become mentor coaches, not, not your typical sports coach. I had good coaches growing up and I had some really bad coaches growing up. And the ones that I appreciated were the ones that, you know, checked in. Like they could tell that, you know, something's off today and they'd pull you aside in practice or, you know, after practice and say, Hey, what's going on? Like, you know, is it, you know, and just, just listen even for five minutes. And so, you know, I want to, I really want to grow a population in Fresno Unified of mentor coaches that, um, that really can pour into our kids. And I think, you know, for whatever reason, I think every district, right, we have we have so many single parent families and, and they, they just don't have time, right? They're working so much to support their families. And, you know, right. sometimes that's a piece that gets missed. And, but right. as educators, like, we get to fill that gap mm -hmm. sometimes. And so I really want to help grow our, our coaches in that. And so the mindfulness part of it, the mental health moments, mental health moments, you bet. That's, that's so key in growing the coaches as well. Well, and I, and I've found as, as a, a principal for, for six, some years and, and Kristen, you know, this too, as, as a former administrator and Julie, I know you too, and Mike, everybody like no individual program is ever going to save anybody. It's not about the program. It's not about that new shiny, this or that, because as a principal, I get approached all the time of this great new, this, and it's going to change your kids reading scores and it's going to change your math and like none of that matters if you don't have people and it's always going to be about having the right person yeah. steering the ship and yeah. so that, that's your teachers that's your support staff that's your custodians like if you truly have an environment where people love kids and that was always my like my first question people would ask me like what do you look for when you hire staff you yeah. gotta like kids like it's great if you have good knowledge but if you don't like kids this isn't going to work because mm -hmm. all the things that you're going to do as a teacher, all these great, cool router basics you're going to ha have. Like the reality is a kid could be in a meltdown moment as you thought you had the greatest lesson in the world. And if you can't relate to that kid in that moment, you're not going to get to the router basics lesson that you were so excited about. And so you got to be able to love kids. And, and as I hear you talk, Julie, that is, that's where you're at with it. And as you talk about developing your coaches and your adults, that's what I'm hearing you talk about is, yes, this is great. Gaming concepts is great. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the right people, if you don't have the right adults and support staff, it's not going to matter anyway. And that's got to be such a driving force. And so I love hearing that you you get that part and you're willing to drive that part forward with your people. And and they're open to it. You know, uh, the coaches that, that were selected before I became part of Fuel, they the majority of them and but you know they're just they're those people right they care they're they're for, unfortunately in our district right now that we had, uh esports is still considered a club so the pay for clubs is far less than uh what you would if you were a sports coach yeah. um we just had that conversation yesterday about okay how do, you know we need to move it so that they're getting paid as coaches um but 
they come back year after year because, you know, it's not about what I'm getting paid. It's not about, you know, how many hours I'm putting in. Some of them put in, you know, two, three hours a day with the kids because they open their doors at lunch too. Yeah. And the kids are coming in. Um, and, you know, it, and I think esports as, as a whole kind of attracts, you know, those type of teachers and adults. I mean, you know, we all, yeah. love, you know, just a little nerdy, I think. And, um, yes. Right. And, and so we have a heart for kids that mm -hmm. are similar and, mm -hmm. you know, we've been very fortunate. We have not had any, uh, any issues with, with coaches because, you know, we, I, and now moving forward, I, you know, I have the opportunity to say, okay, this is, this is what we're doing. We're developing you and your students. We're not, it's not just playing games. And that's something, if I can add, you know, something I think that, the broader audience and, and even principals you need to understand or administrators, superintendents, right? That esports is a controlled environment. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Esports is an adult in a classroom or in a Teams call or a Zoom meeting or whatever with, with the students practicing, working on that communication, collaboration, teamwork, strategizing, gaming at home is a completely different beast, right? That, that's just, I could hop on it you know, in an online environment and I don't know who I'm with, who I'm playing with. And so I think that parents and administrators need to understand that piece that when kids are joining esports, it is a guided and very purposeful activity. It's mm -hmm. not just a free for all kind of right. like, like regular gaming. And then you add gaming concepts in there, right? And now mm -hmm. you have structure around what you're teaching the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't even know that they're really being taught, right? Some a piece of it, and they're excited about it because it is. It has things like shout casting and the router basics, and you know this. And I love listening to kids talk about strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Which is such a critical thinking skill that they don't even realize that they're doing when we're in an esport arena. Right. So there's mm -hmm. just so many benefits that uh, it's not. I, I tell people all the time, it's not just gaming. It's not. Oh. It no. is so much more. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like you mentioned the elementary piece and, and getting the elementary curriculum done. And so beyond that, what what do you what's the future? What do you think the future of all of, of like what do you think is going to happen around you know the country, the world? I mean, do you, what do you see the culminating? How how do we know this is all come together like we hoped it would? And and every every school is using this. What's the what's the end vision here? So. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you, yeah, I can tell you what I'm striving for here in California. So, um, in California, it's yeah. we're we're huge, right? We have we're mm -hmm. a big state, so we are kind of uh, so myself and some other district leaders, um, along with some some other friends from you know partners that we are are uh, working with. You know, we we kind of sat down and said, okay, we can divide California into three regions, right? We can have a NorCal, a SinCal, and a SoCal region um and we can have tournaments whether they're online or in person we do land tournaments right um where so our, our we do them in person uh we don't we let our kids if you if they want to play online platforms they're more than welcome to we don't host our tournaments on online platforms and i i think it's really important to recognize that you know it doesn't matter the platform that, or, that the kids are playing the games on what matters is can we get all these schools and all the districts together so that we can have bring everyone together so we can have regional champions and state champions? Yeah, because so the kids want to play their peers and they want to yeah. want to have that competition with those across the that's town in the state. It. Yeah, that's so in, state. in Fresno, what we do is our fall tournament is internal; it's just our schools. But our spring tournament, we invite other districts from all over California to come. Last season was the first, well, the season before we did that and we just invited our neighboring school district, um, Clovis Unified. This last uh, year, we invited, there were six districts that came. Mm 
um, and had teams. And, you know, this year it's going to, you know, we just want to keep inviting. But what I'm trying to move towards is working with LA Unified and, and getting them to be a little more cohesive in what they're doing as a district. Uh, I met with LA County Office of Ed. They're really excited about bringing the entire thing. So we're talking, you know, LA Unified is about 700,000 students. LA County is about 2.5 million students, right? So it's trying to bring a little bit more or, okay, well, if you have this teacher that wants to play on XYZ platform, great, yeah. um, you know, let them. And But as I think it's how we take the top teams, wherever they finish on whatever platform, maybe it's the top one or top two, and then have a regional tournament. We have a regional tournament in here in Sun Cal and then in, in Northern Cal. Then we can have this huge land tournament, you know, all in one place. And the kids can experience the, that feeling of, competition in person and the excitement and the thrill and I mean you know we can host it in you know here and even if we did it in Fresno at the Save Mart Center we have you know it holds about 30,000 people you know why not let's have let's have them come uh, and they so, will they will and, come right um, and so working yeah working with different bodies up in the in Sacramento and and Stanislaw and Stockton up north you know trying to just pull that all together and then Again, one of our partners is is hosting a national, you know, tournament. He he already rented out or the convention center in Orlando, um, and wants to do a national tournament, right? And it'll start with whomever wants to participate. You know, whoever wants to send their students out, great. We'll start it, and and it's it's just somebody's got to do it. You know, somebody just has to step up and do. I'm going to say what's right for their kids, right? What is needed yeah. for their kids in their school or their district. True in other states, right? So there are pockets of states that are doing a lot of things. And then there are some states where it's crickets. And also even here in California, there there are schools and districts that are like, what? Esports? Like they don't even know. Totally. Um, so, it, you know, we just spread the word and then, you know, I spread it to one and they spread it to another. And, it, you know, it just starts this web and... But that's kind of the, the, the I guess, future is let, we want to do a state thing and then we want to branch out uh, into national and really, um, yeah, I mean, there's no reason. It's it's the second largest viewed sport to the NFL, right? Isn't that crazy? I know. And, and what blows my mind is there's so many people that don't even know what it is. Like, can you imagine when people really start to catch on? Like, it's just going to be... Um, I mean, and people are catching on, but I, I'm, I mean, the ones that are, you know, still like esports, esports, mm -hmm. what's that? you know, um, and I'm all honestly surprised when I, when I meet somebody that's like, I don't, I don't know, know what that is. I yeah, know. Yeah. It, it's, it's still every day. It's, it's almost every, every day, day that I'm, mm -hmm. that I talk to a, talk to a school leader. That's like this kid, my kids told me about esports. What, what is this? What like, is it? Oh, I don't know what like, it is. What do we do? What do we, are we going to play video games at school? I'm like, uh-huh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's and it's that, that and it's even how you said that they they can play video games in school and i'm like well yes but it's not just playing video games right like yeah. i always move towards the career pathway um because that's you know that we all know like a, a gaming a gamer may only be pro for three years if yeah. they need it that if far. If they get there, if they get right? there, yeah. Yep. And somebody else is going to come along and knock them off or, you know, that, you know, they're, the longevity of a pro career is, is, is short, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but if you are a gamer and you are a really great social media marketer, well, now you've got, you know, your, your team, your pro team may not, you may not be able to be on that team, but you could then do social media for that pro team. Right. Or, yep or some other company, uh, or just even out of esports for another company that has nothing to do with esports. So yep. it, it's just trying to educate people on, you know, this is going to attract, because we, what, it, what, I don't, I don't know what the numbers are. You guys probably know better than I do, but like, what is it that eight, 90 some percent of kids play video games anyway? Yeah. Right. So like 97 percent, 12 to 17. Yep. Right. So why not, why not bring it in? And they're interested in it already. And you mm -hmm. add gaming, gaming concepts where now they're actually learning and it's skills. all state. Yeah. It, skills. Right. And it's all state and ISTE and, you know, even went to the, other end of having to align it to California A through G, which is a whole nother beast in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's all aligned. So That's why, the you know, it's, it's literally plug and play, and yeah. and you're targeting kids that are already, you know, thrilled 
to be gaming and now they're like wait i get to i can learn through yep. game yeah yep we have a i have a friend that he actually taught history using call of duty uh be, you know because world war one world war two you know i had huh. a student that won the geography b because of their call of duty knowledge wow i'm not even kidding it like That's at amazing. the end i'm like how how did you do so well it goes and all of his buddies are like he plays call of duty all the time and he's like yeah like the maps and stuff it's all the same as actual maps and so he knew rivers and landmarks in europe because of call That's of duty fantastic like, wow. yep. I love that. That, that was that was 10 years ago i mean 10 plus years ago right um this fella yeah. so i love it <laughs> Well, I think it's time for our fun question. Julie, at the end of every podcast, we like to do a little fun question where all of us answer it. And okay. so I have a bank of questions. And so all I need you to do is give us a number from one to 10 and I'll pick the question. Six. Six. Uh, this is a good one. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> That makes me uh, nervous, Kristen. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is a really fun one. So we got to hear from everybody on this one. So what was your nickname growing up if you Ooh. had one who wants to start i'll go first all right so Trevor. i'm a loud walker as in when i walk i have heavy feet so they called me stompy <laughs> they could always hear me coming because i was a loud walker and even when i was a principal i wore cowboy boots a lot like most of the time i'd wear i wear cowboy boots as a principal and there's, and a, so you were there's a click clack coming down the hall so everybody knew <laughs> you couldn't sneak <laughs> out principal Stompy. gertrude's coming uh, Stompy's coming yep yep cool. <laughs> i almost wish you hadn't brought that up but i guess uh, well right. hey i think it digs in a little deeper so <laughs> julie what was I, your nickname i had two. Oh, okay when i was young very young like or well, I guess not all that young, but my mom had uh, these nicknames for my sister and I, and okay. my sister was Bat Brat, and I was Super Brat because we were huge <laughs> Justice League, you know, the 70s cartoon, right? Wonder Twins and all that. The Wonder so we, Twins. <laughs> we would have capes and roam around, fly around the house, and she was Bat Brat, and I was Super Brat. Okay, when I got into high school, so I have a very thin nose. Mm -hmm. So my softball team started calling me Skeeto because I had a mosquito nose. A so mosquito nose. <laughs> so I was Skeeto. Yeah. That's a good gamer tag, too. Right? There you are. <laughs> All right, Mike. I, I also have two. One's, not, one's, one's good and one's not so good. Um, my, I grew up in the in the 80s and in school in the 80s and there was a little little guy on tv a life commercial named mikey likes it well, oh yeah mikey, he likes it he likes name, it well when you're the husky kid christy and everybody or Kristen, and everybody makes fun of you you don't want to be mikey likes it hey, mikey. At lunchtime hey, mikey. mikey oh give it to mikey he likes it he'll eat anything right so uh -huh. yeah so it was not such a great name for me but that that's one that i got stuck with quite often and then uh <laughs> My dad always used to call me Clem Cadiddlehopper, and I'm not sure why. Clem Cadiddlehopper. Yeah. He goes, Hopper. time for bed, Clem. I was like, okay. And so I don't know where that came from, <laughs> but I dead. still get called that every once in a while. Clem Cadiddlehopper or yes. Hopper? Okay. Hopper. Like, Hopper. Like Bunny Hopper. Like Clem Cadiddlehopper is what he used okay. to call me. And I, That's better than a lot of things dads call their sons. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know what the origin of that is and where that came from, but. I like I, it. Thanks, Dad. Clem I guess. It's kind of like your alternate name, kind of like Phoebe on Friends is Regina oh. Falange. You're Clem yeah. Cladiddlehopper. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But most of the time I was in high school, I was known as Russ. 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 And now you're Russ the Teach. Yeah. So, Fun. Yeah. Well, my nickname growing up was because my name is Chris Ten, T E N. And so it was K hyphen ten. Everybody called me K ten. Oh. Uh-huh. Nice. That was that was that was the thing. So I even had a little license plate. That had K10 on it, which is like, really like funny. hold on, hold on. So you got like a custom license plate that said I K10. did, you know, Johnson County, <laughs> whatever. But it said K10, and and the highway that you take from mm -hmm. K10. from yeah is K10. So and I would drive on K10, K10 with my license plate that said K10. What a nerd! But <laughs> my parents, my friends that have known me forever, I'm still K10. We may be using K10, uh, K10. a little more often now, Mike. Yeah, I think I think that's great. It's a good, yep. I, I almost thought about it for my gamer tag. 
So like yeah, I was going to do Dr. K10. It was my original thought, oh, but that would have been good. I think I know. Right. You change it. Yeah. So, all righty. Well, anyway, just to kind of wind up, we're going to give everybody socials so everybody can know how to get in touch with us again. So I am Kristen Esports at Twitter and LinkedIn. Mike, you are? I am at Russ the Teach on Twitter and Michael Russell on LinkedIn. Trevor? Uh, Gertson underscore EDU and LinkedIn. Just Google Trevor Gertson and I'm not the hockey player. I love it. And Julie... <laughs> Thank you for being our guest today. What, where can our listeners get in touch with you on social media? Uh, so yeah, on Twitter, I'm J Dog Mav, and uh, that's a J D O G Mav. Um, J Dog Mav. And uh, LinkedIn, it's Julie Maver George. Yeah, or Jewel Mav. Jewel Mav. Okay. Jewel Mav. Mav or George. Well, thank you so much. We had a blast talking to you today and just thank you for giving us some of your time. Even when you, you started a brand new job, we're super pumped that you put in a little bit of time with us and hopefully everybody will gain some really super knowledge um, from everything you talked about today. And we just appreciate all you do for kids every single day and, you know, keep doing and building that esports program out there in California because you are killing it. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a blast. I always yeah. be good. We're glad you had fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Bye, Julie. Julie. Bye. Take care.